So in today's video, I want to take a look at a few improvements you can do when dealing with text files. Now, when we first looked at reading and writing to and from text files, uh, I showed you some ways which are not necessarily the fastest. They are just ways in which you could uh, easily understand how to uh, read and write to text files. So in this video, we're going to take a look at ways you can much faster do all that right in one go. So first we're going to take a look at the writing portion, right? Here we open the file for writing. That's fine. That's there's nothing to change here. But here when we do S print F underscore S to a buffer and then we F write that buffer. Instead of doing all that, what you can use is a function called F print F underscore S. And this guy, instead of taking in a buffer, which is a, a char array in our case, but this guy takes in as the first parameter, the file handler itself. So we can type in here out, right? We can simply use it. And then the next few parameters are just the same as in our sprintf calls. We can just copy and paste all this here. And this guy, what's going to do is simply take in these variables, format them right into, into this string, into this uh, format string that we've uh, typed in here and save them into a buffer and then save that buffer automatically to this output string, right? So it's sort of a print F, but instead of printing F to a, uh, to either the console or the char array, we're actually printing uh, to the file itself. So now we don't need any of these function calls. We can remove them. Now to check if the write operation uh, was successful, what we have to do is check the return value of this guy. And what it says is that the return value of this guy is the number of characters written to the file or a negative value if some error occurred. Since we can't really know the actual size of the buffer string, we'll have to simply check if that number is higher than zero, right? So I'm going to say here int bytes wrote, we can call it that if like, that, that's fine, but we have to check here if bytes wrote is higher than zero, because if it's higher than zero, it most likely wrote every single character from the string. Now, now you might want to check exactly if all the characters were written to the file, but uh, for now, there's no easy way to do it with this fprintf underscore s. And I think this is much shorter and it's possibly much more difficult to understand since you have more operations to deal with. The second one it has to do with the reading process. Like the writing process, we have a function called fscanf or fscanf underscore s that we can use. So in our case, we can say here fscanf underscore s. In my case, you can use just fscanf on its own. It's the same, uh, like it's the same call. It just has some, uh, uh, it, it has some checks beforehand before doing any of the reading operations. So. Uh, f scanf underscore s and this takes in again as the first parameter the file handler so we want to pass in here in and then the rest is just the same parameters from s scanf from before so we can just copy and paste all this here like so and this goes right above here but now instead of using f gates we're gonna have to check something else right so this basically what it does is similar to fprintf, it uh, looks at the file and it reads a line of text because I'm putting here a backslash n, right? So it reads this whole line of text with uh, what's before the comma, the first integral and what's after the comma, the second integral, right? Uh, so it's reading this sort of specifier from the um, file. Now, similarly to fprintf, we have to check the return value of fscanf. We have to say here int. Now, this guy returns the actual the elements that are written 
the actual arguments that are written to. Which arguments? Well, these arguments. So in our case, we want two arguments to be written to. So we can simply check that. So we can say here int element uh, red equals that. And if we didn't get two elements, so if elements red is less than two, then, well, we can just simply close the file here as we did in a previous video, and then just uh, remove the s scanf call. Right, so then it's much simpler. It's just in one go, you basically read everything and you get the format and then you uh, also translate that to variables. So you can actually access them with, let's say another printf call. So now if I try to run this, uh, well, I'm getting an exit code one, which as you can see, I have many return ones here. So this doesn't help. So what if I change this to different to different values? I can say here, return code two and three and four. Now, if I try to run this, you'll notice it didn't work again, but we got a different exit code. We got exit code two. And since we only return two here, we know that here is a problem, right? And the problem is very simple. I basically uh, reversed the condition. So we want to, if what we wrote is less or equal than zero, we want to return uh, we want to basically exit the, the program. Um, why I say here less than zero? Because if this guy is less than zero, then some error occurred when trying to write to the file, by the way. If it's zero, then we know that we didn't write anything and that's also bad. All right, so now if I try to run this, finally, you can see that we read 13 and negative one from the file. And again, if I try to change this, or we can see the file itself has 13 negative one. If I try to change this to a negative five, for example, and simply read or simply comment out the right portion, it should work exactly the same, right? And we get negative five here, which is very nice. So using one and two, you will notice that now we don't no longer need these buffers. So we can actually just simply remove them. And yes, this actually simplifies our code quite a bit. So. Keep this in mind when working with files, you can use the fprintf and fscanf functions. So lastly, as a third optimization to this code is, since we're reading and writing to the same file, we can actually have just one single file handler for both read and write operations, although that's a bit more tricky to use. So let's start by first defining this fopen so that we open it for both read and write operations. What we do is simply add a plus here. And w plus basically says, all right, open this file for both reading and writing, but if the file already exists, please overwrite it. Right, it's going to delete it and we can rewrite to it again. All right, so now that we open this with w plus, let's first change its name. I'm gonna change it to, let's say here, file instead of out makes more sense, right? Just gonna do that. And I'm gonna remove the in handler. And we should get some errors here and there. But first things first, we are writing to this. So the writing operation is fine. We don't need to close it after writing it because we want to read from it as well. So once we finished writing, we don't need to reopen it because it's already open. So we can remove this part. So notice we are actually like removing quite a few lines here. And in here, we can read from it. We can say here file instead of in, and then possibly close it right here. Although you'll notice that is, this F close doesn't actually get called inside these return or these ifs uh, bodies here. So you might want to actually F close on every single if uh, statement body basically, or no, not here, but here and here. So now that we have all that in place, well, it's almost finished. We can test it out. So we're opening with W plus and we're simply writing and then reading. It should work, right? If I try to run this, you'll notice I get exit with code or exit code four. Well, exit code four is right here. So something wrong happened at reading. And that really has to do with the with those few complications that come with both reading and writing from the same file handler. Basically, there is a 
cursor inside a file handler. What you do is basically you uh, have a thing that kind of points to characters whenever you're writing to it or when you are reading. Right, so that cursor right now is at the end of our written line, right? It, it read a line, it went backslash n and it went to the next line. So what we have to do is to actually bring it back to the beginning. To do that, we can use a simple function called fseek. fseek, what it does is basically move this cursor. That's it. So I'm going to move the cursor of the file handler called file. I'm going to offset it with zero bytes from the seek underscore set and seek underscore set is really uh, basically a way of saying the beginning for the cursor and I want to set it uh, at zero bytes from the beginning basically setting it at the beginning of the file right so now if I try to run the program you'll notice I get 13 and negative 1 on the screen so this is something that you have to do whenever you're uh, doing a read operation after a write operation. You have to call this fseek function. Although uh, besides that, it's much more simpler to do this using just one file handler. You just have one and we only have one f open, which is much cleaner, I think. So with all that in mind, we have basically made one of the most uh, compact ways you can both write and read to a file to a text file in C. So, so I hope you got something out of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care. Bye.